let's review some tracks. You want it? It's yours, my friend, my friend, 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 friend. All right, so let's, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to go about choosing a, a server this time. Uh, I don't fucking know. Uh, let's do Fortet. <laughs> we always love being greeted with a good Fortetti smile. What's going on? Can't change any servers, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, because of course I'm Kyrian posting. That's why this is happening. Production. There we go. I think this is going to be the one, because this one looks like it's got a lot of hype down here. Very burial already, like just within that first four seconds, I'm like, ooh, burial. Very nice space. charging up sound uh i would uh, definitely tuck that away a little bit more in there maybe cut out some of the lower end of it okay so give me one second okay so uh what i want to talk about with this track is opening up some of that muddiness uh now, one of the things I'm hearing very well, very much. Ah, uh, too loud, too loud, too loud, too loud, too loud. It, it's, it feels like you do have uh, the base of uh, your kick side-chaining your actual base. So it, your kick is becoming really pressed. <laughs> But it just feels like there's something uh, in this area here, right around here, that's really making it. And like, you could just balance that out by just cutting like two, three decibels. But then you may want to boost this up a little bit just to make sure that everything else is being audible around it you're cutting out the part that's making everything muddy and i'm not doing this on individual stem tracks you know you would want to do this on either like a bus like it depends on if you have base layers or if you just have one base synth going but either put them all together and then do each one individually and then route them to a bus and then manage the bus like this i'm only doing this here whole track because i don't have the opportunity to do anything else but this right here right around 107, 100 hertz. It feels like if you cut that out, you can bring up everything else here. Not everything else, because that would be my next part. Is like you have some mid area here that that you may just want to tamper down so that you can then bring up like this area a little bit more where it's clearer and like uh, you can even kind of see that's where my voice is. Uh, this is an area that human ears are more attuned to picking up on. You have presence right here. That would be like presence in the audio spectrum as the song is playing. <laughs> And then you have like that. That's what that is. But then you also have a kind of counterpart to it right in this area, right here. So, too, too much, right? And like using that clap in the background is a good reference because we could really hear that first one when it's up here. It's too much. Uh, but one thing that you don't, uh, this is a common area to just like cut out and then, you know, oh yeah, you have so much room, but then you have nothing there to really give any crunch to what you're listening to. So don't be afraid to put harmonics here. 
but don't, it's really easy to put too many harmonics here and then all of a sudden end up with something that is like really ear grating. So there's a fine balance, but this is generally an area where you do want just a little bit of flavor. Let's talk about something really quick. Now, if we actually route that in here. That entire sound lives between like 1,000 and 4,000 kilohertz minus the honking part. But th that's exactly my point here is that's a very sensitive region for the human ear. And uh, it, you don't need a lot of volume presence for it to be quote unquote present <laughs> or very audible. I almost said visible, but visible to your ears. So audible. Basically, that's why sirens, that's why babies screaming, that's why dogs barking all live inside that pitch range so that they are, that uh, they have naturally evolved so that humans respond to them easily or without as much effort. That means if you put too much harmonic content there, it's not going to work. But also, if you don't have enough, then it feels like your ears are just kind of reaching out for a little bit more, like just something feels a little tiny bit missing when someone's talking like this and you're just like, damn it, could you just speak a little more clearly? That's probably the part that they're missing in, in their actual uh, vocal output. We add that to your claps here. And your hats. And also I'm realizing that's making all of your extra percussive elements come out a little bit too. So definitely sweeten up those two ranges that we're talking about here. Uh, don't worry about that, that's fine. And I do see you have that part cut out, which can be good. And I know it's really hard to tell without having something like a sub pack or a sub, uh, but uh, they're definitely. It could use a, just this little teeny tiny bump here in your sub bass. Uh, or maybe that's just a result of cutting off like everything under 27. I don't know if that's what you did. It, it is always kind of hard. It's hard to get an EQ to properly demonstrate whether or not you are, so you could always check the span. Uh, it does feel like I'm hearing something a little bit in that in that 24, 24 and below range. Again, that just may be a fact of the EQ not working properly. It's such a minute detail. I don't think you need to worry about it too much. But uh, since I saw you were doing something like that to your high end, you may as well do it to your low end too. The idea is to just, the idea is to free up your processor from processing that data so it can focus on other things. But really, everything is so nicely balanced in here. I'm really, I'm really enjoying this a lot. Uh, I would say my biggest goal is finish it. No, you're right. You're definitely on your way to finishing this one. And looking at what else you have on your SoundCloud, uh, you know, just put your put your time in. You know, you'll you'll find a way to to meet the end of this track. You're you're doing a good job. Uh, good percussive production here in the Fortet chat. I'm I'm super I'm super pleased with that. Let's, I don't think I did anything for the Eliminate HQ, er, AHQ last time. Well, let's, let's say hello to the, <laughs> oh, do I do it? Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's it's very much uh, like one of those, uh, you know, dropped it in and got the idea out, just trying to figure out where to go from there types of things. Uh, let's let, let's take a look at this really quick. So if we take this track in here, I hear a bookticket in here. It's uh, getting very much covered up by the bass that's going on. Uh, and with something like this, uh, your bass has elements that you want to be taking the center stage, like it's mid, but 
in that in there we gotta we gotta make some room for everything else. so right there you don't need that and here like it, it almost feels like you need to emphasize uh this like this warmness this warmness warmth you want some warmth warmth -ness. <laughs> so with that you're it's going to feel a bit more present and i feel like i'm repeating myself but it really is going to make it more present in the mix because really look at this harmonic this harmonic right here is what you're focusing on you, you want to basically you can take a look at each of these little dots and treat it as if you're taking care of this hump this hump these humps these humps these humps here, here, and then these humps here. That's the best way to look at it. And this is going to change depending on what sound you put into it. But then you have this here. This is called the fundamental frequency, where the very initial harmonic of your sound lives. And then we can focus on the second harmonic there, which is really going to, uh, in that case, the first harmonic is more of a bass resonance where you feel it just because of the pitch the sound is at but then with this one that's where you're getting all of your flavor for the sound from if you take it out it's just like the bass and nothing else This is like all of this here. It's just not bassy enough, and it's a just a thing in your ear. So one thing I noticed as we take that out, the pads that you have going on all of a sudden stick out a lot more. But remember, uh, if you saw uh, earlier in this video, I talked about how like fire trucks sirens live in this frequency range, meaning that it's pretty annoying to have too much presence there. In the last track, there wasn't enough presence. In this one, we have a little too much presence in this area. So I would tamper this off just a hair. But yeah, we do lose that presence there. But your presence isn't in this 1,000, 2,000 range. Your presence is going to be up here in this 45, 5, 6 range. And that was maybe a little too loud. But uh, it also may just be the sample. You may want to volume automate that sample so it goes like from quiet to loud. So it's not just right in your face. Uh, this is a very whippy track. You know, it's a good idea. You just need to clean it up a little bit more. Uh, something else I think would help a lot would be to put something like a mastering or just like a limiter here. Not just that one. Uh, I would choose something or like maybe even a compressor if you just put like a uh, fruity compressor. And I would just choose one of the mastering ones here. What, uh, really any of them. Uh, they're all... You may need to like boost the gain there a little bit so it comes back up and maybe turn down the threshold so it's a little more active. I wouldn't do like anything like more than a couple dB, but really bringing that up to a point as long as you're using a limiter so that it doesn't go above that and you're not dramatically posting the gain above that so it's not something super ridiculously loud, then, uh, you know, it shouldn't be an issue. That one doesn't sound good. I'm going to do and like even from there i can just hear like like from there i could hear this kind of ghastly ghostly that's just getting in the way. You got to clean that up. And now all of a sudden your track has room to breathe.
So, uh, oops, now I'm a little quieter. But here's the thing. We want to we wanna add some harmonics to that, whether that be through Wave Shaper, just by boosting this up uh, and just making the wave form thicker. The way that's going to interact with everything here. Adding in just enough of that middle frequency is going, or sorry, carving out enough of those bad middle frequencies is going to give us the result that I think is going to allow you to move on with creating more parts for the track. And then as you bring more samples, bring more synths in to really make some unique versions of this riff that you have going on, then you'll be able to uh, trigger yourself to see what elements need to be added into the entire track as a whole. Uh, just got to work on these parts. Then I think, you know, like Lego pieces, you'll know what you're building. Good stuff, though. You know, we, we like where you're at with this. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's do. I wonder if the John Hopkins one has anything. Brian Eno, John Hopkins, Theo Abrams one. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Especially because we just had the. the was it 20th or 15th anniversary? 10th. Of immunity. I believe it was the 20th anniversary of immunity. 10th. It's going to be really hard for me to not click on that one and just go. I don't agree with that. Uh, I, I think you have enough of like a, a, a unique take. I mean, I, I feel that because John Hopkins is just totally John Hopkins. However, you do have a very interesting take on this. It's almost like how the Anna version of Singularity has its own element and is just so enjoyable in its own right. It doesn't necessarily need to compare to the original track, even though it's based on the original track. My main qualm with this here is there's no harmonic anything going on. It's a, uh, I mean, uh, let me rephrase that. There's no, it, it's all very muted in that upper end. Let's take this in really quick. Cause like, this is, this is really good. Boop. And it's, it's a, it's a mixed track. So, I mean, it is quieter. Maybe this part right here is, is a little too much, but here's what we can do with it. And this is why I think maybe your direction should hear from here should be more mixing and mastering, because like it's just stuff like this. This part is a little too loud, and it doesn't ruin the track. I mean, it, it does take the the listener, the user, the listener out of the moment, but we can just cut that and make it a little quieter. And you can even do stuff like this, where if you make it a unique sample, you can, uh, sorry, you have to make it, make unique as a sample, not make unique, make unique as a sample. This makes it a new file. So you can literally just have that one part and do things like fade the stereo. So where you have it go from left one ear to the right ear. Or like stuff like this. You have a one, two, three. Those are, you have those three little stutter kicks. You can just fade them out a little bit to give a more gated feel. And then maybe mess up. Do, uh, do, do, do. You don't want, you, you, sorry, with this, I didn't hear. Da, da, da. I hear. Da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 almost. Kind of. That, that's more what I'm going for. Keep in mind, I'm not on the grid right now, so I'm just going by feel. It's, 
especially if you can bounce these as individual tracks, this would be so much more easier for you to accomplish editing like this. That's more, really, you have your instrumentation down here. You just need to spend more time prettying it up and really giving it a fine polish. Like, I, I will use the metaphor, like, when you see, it's like a video of someone who shines a penny with increasingly finer grit of a polishing compound. And it just gets so shiny. But, like, right? Uh, uh, hello? No one asked you. Uh, it's like you're kind of in those middle stages. This is a really polished idea. This is definitely a coin. You just need to start working up through those higher grades of polishing. So, what I, uh, initially here, uh, I want to just get into a more overarching scope of what's happening with this track here. I love this bass right here. God, it that would place that would kick so hard live. But it does feel like there's almost just a tiny bit of muddiness muddiness in here. Yep, that right there. And because you've taken that out, you have more room to support it elsewhere on the mix. which I really think you should dedicate that more to this high end because that's what this track is lacking is just so much high end. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I may hear why because you got some really bad digital audio artifacts going on here. I'm not really sure what's causing that there for your end. Um, that's pretty intense. Uh, either way, it's not awful. It's not impossible to deal with. Uh, However, and that we can hone in on right there because it really feels like it's just right there. And then, and then we still restore some of your high end. We could cut some of this out too. And now there's almost just like... Another thing you may want to consider is just automating this at this point. Start off where you've cut out most of that obnoxious or if you can even isolate it you can you can phase invert it and hopefully cut it out that way uh but really that sounds like a digital signal issue um uh, and a closed eye signal i don't fucking know but really um there's there's not a lot of ways to get it out of there once it's a baked recording so if you have individual stems of this that you can re-record and isolate exactly where that's coming from and then cut it off on that one stem that's going to be your best option for saving that particular aspect you could still make this track with it in there and get away with it though and that's where i'm suggesting you automate it out basically start your track off with a lower frequency And then as the track progresses, and then you have to introduce that signal again, you can even play with it. Stuff like that is ways that 
all of a sudden this thing that is a problem that you almost need to cover up in the background, it can become an element of the song. It, it doesn't become this impossible to deal with mess. It becomes more harmonic content for the song listener to enjoy. Uh, but just just because you said specifically that, uh, I disagree. I disagree because uh, the Anna remix slaps and your remix could slap too in that exact same way. Uh, good work here. Definitely good luck finishing finishing these up. Um, yeah, no, really big fan of that. Thank you for sharing. And definitely let me know if you finish this. Oh God, I will. Uh, you will hear no complaints from me. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do today. If you want to keep in touch, join this server. If you want specific feedback, you can definitely take advantage of this place. If you just want to hang out or like talk, uh, I'm here as well. So uh, feel free to join. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Uh, yeah, you know what to do. Hit those buttons. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Are we the last living souls? Are we the last living souls? Are we the last to get away to a song?